Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, let me start with the Audi news for the Audi fans. He is asleep in the bedroom. It is almost 80 degrees out. Um, what is that? It's 27 centigrade. It's warm, especially for the middle of April. And for some reason, he's decided he wants to go sleep in the bed. So I expect he's probably just going to photobomb us later. That used to be his M.O. until he really got to the point where he wanted to hog as much of the camera time as he could. But I guess we're going to have to settle for the occasional photobomb at this point. Uh, Catherine and yellow. Yes, this scarf does have yellow in it. But it's not a solid yellow scarf. What can I say? I'm running out of yellow. But we're still going to make sure we do a little yellow in support of Catherine. Okay, when we come back, we're going to get right into it. So, as promised, I finished Lady C's book. Uh, I would strongly recommend to all of you, go out and get it. It's, it's a good read. There's a lot of interesting stuff, so much more than I've covered in the last uh, three videos here. Because I'm not trying to, you know, spoil everything for you. I just want to give you some of the high points, some of the things you need to look for as you're reading. But she has been very active in the Mexit community for a long time. And so I think for that alone, we should be supporting her. So today we are going to talk about the final bombshell and well, let me start with some trigger warnings. One, this is probably not a child-friendly topic. So if you have children, proceed at your own risk. Two, this is probably something that could be triggering for people, especially if they have abuse issues in their backgrounds. So having said that, we're going to get right into it because I've already told you I hate videos where, you know, they ramble on for half an hour and then tell you what you tuned in for at the very end. No, no, we're just going to shoot it all now. Uh, Lady C tells a story, and this is at the end of the book. In fact, it may even be in the epilogue rather than in the last chapter. Uh, she tells a story of someone who is a mutual friend of both hers and the sock puppet who approached her at the time that she was writing the first book here. Here it is. Here's the first book. Oh, and by the way, if you look at all of the little bookmarks, you can see that not only have I read this book, but I've read it carefully. Uh, when she was writing that book, this mutual friend came to her with a an outrageous story that Lady C, by her own admission, dismissed uh, with prejudice because she was very clear that it was made up out of whole cloth. And that is that the source of the conflict between Nutmeg and her father, Tom Markle Sr., was that he had been inappropriate with her. The phrase that Lady C used, which I'm, I'm not sure, I think it may be the phrase that the person bringing the story to her also used, was interfered with. Now, interfered with is something of an old-fashioned euphemism dating back to the times when oh, we just didn't speak openly about anything sexual in nature. And certainly we weren't comfortable speaking openly about 
non-consensual sexual relations. Uh, interfered with is not the only one I am familiar with. Meddled with was one of Jane Austen's favorites. Uh, and obviously there are no details in this, no sense of how old Nutmeg was when this alleged interference took place. But I got to tell you, I'm with Lady C. I don't believe a word of it. Not a single word of it. But this is explosive. And this is potentially very damaging to Tom Sr.'s reputation. And frankly, the first time I heard anything like this was on Lady C's channel, one of her videos. And I'm thinking, Maybe this went back as far as two years. I, I don't recall. And uh, she was at that time just as firm as I am being with you now. No, 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 don't buy it. Never took place when pigs freaking fly. There, the idea that there is the least smidgen of truth to these allegations is, well, I, I just don't even think it's worth considering. The allegation itself is abhorrent. So I did have questions uh, about why Lady C would have raised this on her videos. And of course, again, in the book, when she is clearly so certain as she should be, that there's no truth to it. So let me flesh this out just a little bit more for you. The source who brought the story to Lady C was friendly with the sock puppet. And the sock puppet is allegedly the source's source on this. So in other words, the sock puppet goes to the source and says, let me tell you all about the terrible thing that my amazing wife's terrible father did to my amazing wife. Yeah, right. That's credible. But obviously anything the sock puppet would know about this would have come from Nutmeg. So it starts to look like what we have is a concerted effort uh, to sort of back channel a wild allegation about Nutmeg's father. And this is an allegation that was raised. Now, this book was published in 2020. And Lady C says it was while she was writing this book, so we're looking at 2019. As early on as 2019, possibly even earlier, Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet were determined to, well, this is beyond slandering Thomas Sr. It's beyond that. This is just so over the top, it's actually hard for me to talk about it because I know what kind of damage, even a wild accusation of this sort, something that, that is so absurd it never could have possibly happened. I know what kind of damage that can do to a person's reputation. And it's clear that is what they wanted, that the person who brought the story to Lady C was hoping that it would make it into this book. Well, gee, I guess they were out of luck. But I did start to wonder afterward, when it came into the new book, why, why Lady C would have done this. Uh, I, I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't know the woman. I have no contact with her at all, but I'm sure she must have an email address somewhere. And I do think I might just write her an email and say, really, you know, don't leave me to speculate. What, what was the thinking? Because even repeating an allegation like this, can be so damaging. And I had this allegation brought to my attention through the comments of some of my own videos. And although I addressed the comments, I wasn't going to make a video about it because this is, oh, this is just too hot to handle. I'm assuming I can't say for sure. I'm, I'm assuming because I do want to give Lady C every possible benefit of the doubt. I am assuming that the reason she's throwing this out is because the rumor is in circulation. 
I have not, through my own um, research, determined that it is. But nevertheless, if she believes it's in circulation, perhaps she feels it's better to just draw back the curtain, shine the bright light of day on it, and, you know, like all the usual little rats and bugs, it'll scuttle off into the corner where it will be forgotten. But I have to say, it's risky. This is risky because throwing something out there like that could in fact encourage some people to believe that it did happen. And as I say, no, 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 did not, no. I don't have to have been there to know that this is a complete fabrication. Uh, I'll get into that in a bit. But it might encourage people to think that maybe it did happen. They know there was a rift between Nutmeg and her father that is otherwise inexplicable to the average person, right? And throwing a story out like this, people might be inclined to say, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. So I'm not clear about why Lady C went forward with this story. Uh, as I say, I've got to assume that she did it in the hope that exposing it completely would disempower this narrative. And I hope she's right. What I am afraid is I am afraid that it might backfire, that in fact people might take this story in isolation without looking at the rest of the book and use it as a club to beat Thomas Markle with. And quite frankly, this is an old man who is apparently not doing very well. Last I heard, he was, in fact, not doing very well. So he's probably not in the world's best position to defend himself. And no one should have to defend themselves against an allegation like this, if in fact it is false. That is, that's a terrible position to be put in. Because what can you possibly say except, nah, -uh, uh, you can't prove a negative. Thomas Markle cannot prove he did not approach his daughter in any inappropriate ways. Can't be done. So what are we looking at here? And I'm not really sure. I have to believe there was some positive that Lady C hoped to take out of this because obviously the possibility of negative stuff is very great and you would need a very good positive to outweigh that. But that's what I am throwing out. That was pretty much the final bombshell. So why do I not believe it? Number one, right up until a matter of mere months before Nutmeg married the sock puppet, she was still touting her father as the greatest father in the world. He was wonderful. He did everything for her. She adores him and so on. Now, at this point, she was in her mid to late 30s. She was financially independent of him. And if, in fact, there was uh, a tainted aspect to the relationship, she was not a terrified child, dependent on parents, not knowing what to do, where to go. Why would she still cover up for it? And I do want to make it very clear, some victims of abuse will, in fact, cover for their abusers. But as a general rule, this is in a situation where they are financially or socially dependent on this. If it is the parent who's putting the food on your table, if it is the spouse who is paying the bills and supporting your kids, yes, people do have a lot of very practical reasons for, you know, sort of getting by to get by. No judgment on them. People do what they feel they have to do. But that was not Nutmeg's case. And certainly she was not, and never has been, probably never will be, the sort of personality who would be willing to tolerate someone abusing and or exploiting her 
without fighting back because she is nothing if not a street fighter and a very dirty street fighter at that, as we can see from this particular allegation. Uh, maybe that's another thing Lady C was hoping to get from this. You can't look at an allegation like this without realizing how, how low Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet will stoop in order to neutralize people they believe are their enemies. Although why they should believe Thomas Markle, who always adored his daughter, was their enemy is beyond me, I, I do accept that at some point they threw him into the enemy camp and went beyond throwing him to the wolves. This is not just throwing someone to the wolves. Um, you know, what happened with him and the paparazzi in Mexico was throwing him to the wolves. This is so, this is just throwing him to the demons with a bottle of steak sauce in his back pocket. This is outrageous. So maybe that's what, I, I should be honest with you, I'm still trying to work out why Lady C would have wanted to go public with this. And maybe that's it. Maybe she felt that that was something that, that needed to be thrown out there, that people need to know the lengths to which this couple will go. And I don't know anybody who would even go this far, and I can't imagine anyone who would be willing to go any further. Uh, it's just, it's utterly sickening. So, I look at the fact that Nutmeg had a very close relationship with her father right up to the time she got married. She not only never indicated there was any problems in the relationship, she described him as a wonderful father. No one around her ever indicated that there was anything amiss anywhere along the way. And certainly, if there were problems of this sort in your domestic relationship, in your childhood or adolescence, that I don't have a clear sense of the time frame you would certainly confide that to friends or relatives or teachers or someone who could help you, not uh, a messenger to bring it to Lady Colin Campbell. I, that is rather absurd. Uh, and uh, for me, it's just the common sense indicates that this never, ever took place. But that was the bombshell in the final third of the book. Now, as I indicated in the last video, there are some things that I, I am inclined to disagree with, you know, just honest difference of opinion in terms of what's presented in the book and what my own take is. And I wanted to get into at least a couple of those. One, Lady C says that she believes Nutmeg has always had a humanitarian and altruistic streak. I am hoping that she is either being facetious about this, this is just um, sort of uh, tongue-in-cheek, sarcastic, whatever, because I would strongly disagree with this. I do not believe Nutmeg has ever had an ounce of altruism, ever. Uh, Lady C mentioned Nutmeg's volunteering at a soup kitchen when she was in high school. And now Lady C may not know this. She was not uh, doing her primary and secondary education in the United States. But here in the U.S., in uh, schools, and these are the schools that do this, they're more likely to be in affluent communities. They are more likely to be girls' schools or co-ed schools rather than all boys' schools. They are more likely to be religious. They are more likely to have high tuitions and therefore more privileged students. There is a tradition of volunteer work that is expected from the students. Uh, I have even seen that go so far as into the college level particularly with religious institutions, but be that as it may. And most students would have had some degree of pressure brought to bear. Anything from the small pressure of teachers dropping hints right up to the very overt 
If you want those letters of recommendation for your college of your choice, you're going to need to do something to beef up your profile like volunteer work. And it really is that blatant in some schools. So do I believe that Nutmeg was motivated by her love of the poor? No. She was hoping to beef up her admissions forms for the college she wanted to go to, which, by the way, I don't believe was Northwestern. I believe that was choice number two. I think Princeton was her first choice. I believe I read that somewhere. Anyway, so yeah, they did expect a little bit of community service. Uh, how do I know this? Because I went the same route. And yes, you know, I was told that I would need to go out and do community service in order to beef up the college application. And uh, of course I did it. We all did it. Everyone, all my friends did it. Uh, some of us were more service-minded than others. Some of us were just, we were there in order to fill that unspoken requirement to get the necessary letter of recommendation and to be able to put, I did X amount of, well, actually we didn't, we didn't say how much service we did, but I did volunteer service at here, 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 and here, which could have amounted to nothing more than four hours total, the way it works. So am I willing to look at that and say that is proof of humanitarianism? No, absolutely not. She's very much a humanitarian when there's something in it for her. And in this case, something in it for her would have been better letters of recommendation for college and a better chance of admission when the college uh, admissions board looked at her application and saw that she was minded to improve her community. Just like later on when she did all of her alleged volunteer work, which consisted of little more than mindless photo ops in order to boost her profile so that she could target the sock puppet and you know achieve her dream, grab her brass ring, live happily ever after. No. Do I believe any of this was ever legitimate? No. So, to be fair to Lady C, as I say, this her comments may have simply been tongue-in-cheek. Uh, certainly that's how I would prefer to take them. It could also be that she's going out of her way to try to give Nutmeg the benefit of the doubt. And if so, well, you're a better man than I, Gunga Din, because I would not do that. But I don't agree with that part of the picture that's being painted. Um, another one let me throw out to you. Uh, Lady C mentions in, I believe, three separate occasions in the book, she refers to the expression, give away the milk. And I'm not sure if she's familiar with the expression because it's an American expression. Now, uh, if she were American and she were uh, raised in the U.S., uh, being of my generation, she's only a couple of years older than I am, she would certainly be familiar with this because this was an injunction all of our mothers gave us against premarital sex. That's what it means. The full expression is, no man will buy the cow if he's getting the milk for free. And we were the cows, you know, uh, the young women approaching the age at which we might become sexually active. Our mothers were basically telling us that we needed to get that ring before we did the deed, because if the man was able to get sex from us, he would never marry us. That was considered wisdom back in the 50s and 60s. It really was. Uh, everyone I know was told some variation of that. Uh, you know, right up to the, if you ever show up pregnant, I'll kick you out of the house and disown you because of the, the values in society at our time. So giving away the milk for free is basically engaging in sex without the benefit of marriage. And we all know Nutmeg certainly never took any such advice to heart because, Lord, she was giving it away whenever she could. This is not a woman who was innocent as a lamb 
when she went into either her marriage with Trevor or her marriage with the sock puppet. She had lived with both of them in advance, and that's what this whole expression is about. You don't live with a man if you can extract that marriage commitment from them. You get that first. So antiquated value system. I'm very much aware of the fact that the younger generation does not look at things this way, but this is an antiquated expression. It's an expression that comes from a previous generation. My mother said this to me, her mother said it to her, and for all I know, my great-grandmother said it to my mother's mother. So it's, as I say, an antiquated expression, but that is what it means. So I'm throwing that out because it could become very confusing, especially to people who are old enough to have heard the expression and wondering what Lady C might mean when, you know, she's talking about nutmeg not giving away the milk. Because from our understanding of that expression, oh yeah, sure, she was. She was not withholding milk, not by a long shot. So I thought it was wise to just clear that one up more as a sort of a, a culture clash between Lady C on one side of the pond and much of her readership on the other. As for everything else, just overall, like I say, I think this is worth going out and getting. There are far too many little bits, little teasers here and there. There is the whole issue of surrogacy involving Lilibet that I have not even touched upon. I'm just, because I don't want this to be a spoiler. I just, I want you to know what's going on here because I want you to go get the book and read it for yourselves. But we've got the whole Lilibet surrogacy issue. And I think maybe at some point in the future, not right now, because I do want you to have a chance to go out, get the book, process it a little, but we should probably go back and take a closer look at these issues of surrogacy and what they mean. Now, I can tell you right now, no sooner did those words come out of my mouth when keyboards all over the world were clacking with people typing in, Children, what children? Because I know that many of you do not believe the children even exist in the first place. And I think you know, I'll believe it when I see it, but I am not convinced at this point. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say, I believe they've made them up out of whole, maybe I would. Maybe they would have made the children up out of whole cloth. Lord knows, Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet have no credibility to fall back on. They can't say, of course we wouldn't have made up children. We're not liars. It's like, yeah, right. So why should I believe anything they say? But I think this may be an issue to take a look at later. If you want to do that, let me know in the comments. But as I say, it won't be immediately later. I want to give you all, all a chance to get the new book, take a look at it, read it. There may well be many, many other little things that I haven't mentioned that will pique your interest that we can talk about. So that is what I have for you today. Um, once again, go get the book. I've said that like 14 times in this video, but I do think that we should show some support because Lady C has supported the Megxit community and we need to throw a little of that back in her direction. So get the book. You'll enjoy it. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out, and I will see you all next time. In the meantime, have a terrific day.